the sort of key things I was planning to cover were um, the legal framework for the registry, secure data processing, the issue of patient consent, Caldicott guardian approval, uh, and then to talk a little bit about uh, developing our systems in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, because at the moment our information governance, ethics, approvals, and data processing uh, arrangements have all been secured for England, um, and the patient consent issues are secured for England and Wales, but we have to go through separate processes of application and approval in Scotland and Northern Ireland. So just to, so this is really a sort of reassurance talk to just highlight the fact that we have addressed all of these fundamentally important issues um, for the registry, and particularly the importance of reassuring trusts um, locally that the patient identifiable data that's being submitted through to the registry is being appropriately handled and governed. So in terms of the legal framework, um, although we have the collaborative of organisations that set the policies under which the registry will operate, it is actually the BSG that is the legal owner of the registry and is legally responsible for everything we have to do. It had to be a named organisation. Uh, but in terms of the data, the local data remains locally owned. Um, and the other aspect that we've followed through is that ethics, local ethics approval is not needed to submit data to the registry. We've had national clarification that that is the case. And you will see in the back of this document, there are the official letters from the confidentiality advisory group from the NHS um, Health Research Agency Authority, um, just so that you actually can see the documentary proof that we have the approvals in place. Um, the process for submitting data um, is a simple one. We have the three, three ways of submitting data into the registry, from the registry PMS, the patient management system, through other forms of electronic patient record, which may be different systems or may be sort of trust systems, and then there is the web data entry portal. The data from each of those will be submitted to a data safe haven, and we've adhered to the current Caldicott principles, and we are using, wherever possible, the official standard NHS routes for handling data. So in the case of England, that's the Health and Social Care Information Centre. In Scotland, it would be EDRIS and equivalent bodies in Wales and Northern Ireland. So the data goes with patient identifiable data from the registry, from your, you as a trust, to, into the data safe haven, is pseudonymised there after linking the records to the hospital episode statistics, uh, and is then a pseudonymised file is forwarded to the registry. And so we only have data that is aggregated and sufficiently anonymised to prevent re-identification of patients. The um, diagram that's in there just shows, in fact, the process by which, over a secure portal, the data can be uploaded into the Health and Social Care Information Centre. They will validate it, verify the NHS number, link it across to the HES data, um, and then they will actually pseudonymize it by, for example, changing date of birth to month and year of birth, changing the postcode to a higher level so that it covers more addresses. So we still have location, but it's not at the detailed level of the individual postcode. They then send that file of that data across to the registry database, and we will have parallel processes in place for Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So the security that we can offer in terms of data protection and reassurance to patients is that we're using the standard NHS IT systems and we're working to standards such as uh, using the N3 network for the web portal. And we're using NHS data safe havens for processing the patient identifiable data for linking to other NHS data sets. Um, and we do have the ability, supposing there was a safety issue in terms of registry data, um, to go back to the HSCIC and they can then identify patients and inform trusts in a similar way that would happen if there was an issue from someone in terms of audit data. In terms of patient consent, the current trend in all aspects is to, of data collection is to move towards obtaining formal patient consent for data, um, and the registry in time will be will have to operate with written 
patient consent, but we have been able to secure an 18-month window for the registry to operate as a project on an opt-out basis, giving time for patient consent to be recorded. After around about February or March 2016, it will be the case that reg the registry cannot hold data on patients where we don't have a registry consent form signed. Um, we have um, the ability, ability built into the patient management system for you to record the patient consent and there is in fact a flag on every page of the patient management system that tells you whether that individual patient has given their consent to registry data or not. The, um, we're at the moment just waiting for our patient information materials and consent form to be uh, approved by the Health and Social Care Information Centre. And once that's done, we'll be in a position to supply you with a pack of posters, information, leaflets, and consent forms so that you can begin the process of obtaining consent from your patients. Obviously, that you, before you can submit data to the registry, you will need um, formal consent and authorization from your local Caldicott guardian. That's the patient management system and you can just see on the left to record consent and we have separate consents for patients to approve their data being used for approved registry research projects um, and also an additional consent if they wish um, if the registry from a registry point of view we were able to identify that they were eligible for an approved research project then we can actually use a reverse system through the health and social care information center to inform you at the centre and the patient that they are eligible for a research project, which will be you know, a real advantage in those research projects where it's quite hard to find patients. So there are those three separate consent options and patients have the choice to consent to registry data and then yes or no to research and to being notified about research projects. As I say, Caldicott Guardian approval is going to be necessary, and that's really what this document in here is about, so that you can, if you're beginning to move towards submitting registry data, um, use that to inform your local guardian, but there will then be formal authorization forms that they have to send in to the Health and Social Care Information Centre to um, make it clear that the trust has formally approved the submission of data. Um, and finally, as I mentioned, we have got to go through separate processes for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, um, and we'll be applying to those over the coming months. So I anticipate that by the end of 2014, we will have all of the data processing and information governance uh, systems fully in place so that whichever hospital wants to submit data to the registry can do so. Thank you. Thank you.